My very first seizure activity uh, happened in China. My seizure activity increased dramatically. While teaching, my eyes and mouth would often twitch. My throat would tighten up, I'd struggle to breathe, and the right side of my body would go numb. Along with the seizures, I experienced hallucinations and felt continuously anxious. Throughout all of this, I barely slept and was literally losing my mind. I was prescribed several medications that only made me feel worse. I kept a journal and wrote about my struggles. Events send me into complete rage. I'm cursing, I want to kill myself, I hate being alive. And then I would try to break things, slamming everything in sight and saying things like, I wish I was dead. Because we never got convergence of information until Dr. Najjar. Dr. Suel Najjar, he said, I know what you have and I, I'm here for you. She had great doctors, um, he's both on the East Coast and the Mayo Clinic, who looked over the case and said, yeah, this must be an autoimmune encephalitis. Her immune system, for whatever reason, is responding to parts of her brain and recognizing them as abnormal and essentially mounting an attack on her brain. That leads to inflammation. That inflammation causes the brain to become irritable. And the brain, being an electrical organ, when it becomes irritable, it makes seizures. Her doctors had started her on intravenous immune globulin. So although the encephalitis seemed to have stabilized, was even getting better, her seizures got worse and worse. We tried several different medicines, but they either caused too many side effects or they didn't help enough with the seizures. And that's why we went to the next step of evaluating her to determine whether or not surgery could help bring the seizures under better control. So this is when we say that the metaphor of it being on fire, so to speak, this very abnormal electrical activity. These are only millimeters apart, and you know you don't see it even a centimeter away. And you can see exactly where it is. It's right in the insula. Dr. Chang was able to remove the front part of the insula. That allowed him to get in and remove the front part of the temporal lobe as well. When the pathologists were able to look at the tissue under the microscope, they found that the insula still had evidence for active inflammation. Probably the back half or two thirds of the insula was spared in the resection. You can see here. The remaining portion of my insula, along with the scar tissue from years of inflammation, once again became irritated, and my symptoms started to return. So we knew that we weren't done and we had to do more. The first one I was asleep, um, and, they, and then this last one, I was completely awake, completely awake for four and a half hours. A successful second surgery gave me a true sense of hope. For the time being, my battle with autoimmune limbic encephalitis seemed to stabilize. I realized I could always have some type of seizure activity due to my epilepsy, but my most debilitating seizures were gone, and the doctors at UCSF had more good news. Through the genius of technology, a device from Neuropace called an RNS could help monitor and minimize my seizures. Yes. Our hope is that with more and more manipulations, Dr. Rao will be able to get just the right combination so that we can electrically treat those seizures. After treating her seizures and finding that area and then taking that tissue out responsible for the seizures, what was more impressive was the effect it had on her emotional stability and behavior. It's a huge clue to how disorders like anxiety and depression act. And her case couldn't have demonstrated more how we cannot ignore this clue.